Hello, hello, grade 12. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, Uabutiwa Sos Ukwabela Wemets. And without any further ado, let's look at these questions that we have here. Ah. Okay, so we have question seven, still on acids and bases. It says two gram of magnesium hydroxide is reacted with 30 centimeter cube of sulfuric acid solution of concentration 1.5 mole per dm cube. According to the following balanced equation, so we can see the balanced equation there, then 7.1.1 says why is sulfuric acid considered a strong acid, right? So we know the answer that we always give to that one is because it ionizes it ionizes completely in water. Right. Then 7.1.2 for eight marks now they're saying let's calculate the concentration of the final solution. Now, before anything else, I want you to observe here. They're saying two grams of magnesium hydroxide is reacted with 30 centimeter cube of sulfuric acid solution, which we know that this one here will be a strong acid. Then we know that this whole solution here, when reacted, will be acidic. So in other words, the one that will be in excess is this one here, the excess reagent, mainly because we even know that sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid, so it will produce two hydronium ions which obviously will impact our ph then this one here has to be the limiting reagent now it is best for us to calculate via the limiting reagent if we want to know how much of the sulfuric acid actually reacted remember the final solution we are now aware that the final solution will uh, be composed of the hydronium ions right since this solution here will be acidic right so this being the excess reagent so the final solution remember represents the solution that will be in excess so that's the first thing that we need to figure out so obviously following our stoichiometric steps we know that number one we have to first calculate the number of moles of the limiting reagent so we have n is equals to m over big m Right, then our mass, we are given that it is 2 gram. Then over our molar mass for magnesium hydroxide, if we just calculate, we have 24. And then plus 2 times uh, 16, plus 2 times 1. When we do all of this, we're going to end up with 58. Right, so we have 58 grams per mole. And then we're going to put it here. So 58 grams per mole. Right, okay, now at this point, Let's say 2 divided by 58 is going to give us 0 0.03 mole, right? But then uh, using the ratios in order to find how much of this reacted, remember we use ratios if we want to find the number of moles reacted. So if you say what is the ratio, so step number 2 now, what is the ratio of H H2SO4 to the ratio of the magnesium hydroxide then looking at uh, our balanced equation, we can see the ratio is 1 is to 1. So that means if 0 0.03 mole reacted of the magnesium hydroxide, also 0 0.03 mole of the sulfuric acid actually reacted. So we have the number of moles of the sulfuric acid uh, reacted. But then what is the available number of moles? What was the initial number of moles from the beginning of uh, the question, right? or the beginning of the reaction. So that means we have to calculate the number of moles initially of uh, the sulfuric acid H2SO4. Now to do that, we can see that we are given the concentration and the volume, which we can use that to calculate the number of moles by saying C is equals to N over V, right? Now what is our concentration? It is 1.5 and then what is our volume? Note that the volume needs to be converted to a decimeter cube. So we divide this by 1,000. When we say that it divided by 1,000, we get 0 0.03. Now having to cross multiply here, 
our number of moles is now 0 0.05 mole and then now at this point to find uh, the number of moles in excess or finally so number of moles final or in excess so let me show the arrow from here now we are going here right so to find the number of moles finally or in excess right remember finally means the ones in excess we will say the number of moles initially minus the number of moles reacted so i for initial and r for reacted right so the number of moles initially was 0 0.05 and then the number of moles reacted represented by the ratios so 0 0.03 so let's indicate here that therefore the number of moles uh, reacted is equals to 0 0.03 mole so that we are aware of what we are talking about then uh, having to find the ones in excess it's just uh, subtracting these ones and then we get 0 0.03 two mole right but then what are they looking for they're looking for the concentration of the final solution we only have the number of moles of the final solution so that means we still need to uh, further calculate here by saying c is equals to n over v then our number of moles is 0 0.02 and then our volume still is the one that we are given here that is centimeter cube which is 0.03 now having to punch that into your calculator you now have 0 0.67 mole per dm cube right so that's how you were supposed to calculate that for a total of eight marks so make sure that uh, you follow through uh, the way i've done it so starting from here your number one and then you went and calculated the number of moles uh, reacted so that was your number two then from here you went to this part here step number three and then from here this was your step number four and then from calculating the number of moles now you had your final step right to calculate the concentration so that's how you were just supposed to go about uh, tackling that question okay so let's proceed we have 7.2 says a dilute hydrochloric uh, hydrochloric solution has a concentration of 0 0.15 mole per dm cube this dilute solution reacts with concentrated solution of na2co3 so that's sodium carbonate and then 7.2.1 says define the term dilute acid now dilute acid a dilute acid is an acid that has so let me say that contains so is a sub is an acid that contains a small amount of acid a small amount of acid in proportion in proportion to the volume of what to the volume of what right so that's it a dilute acid is a is an acid that contains a small amount of acid in proportion to the volume of water right then two marks for that now 7.2.2 says calculate the ph of the hydrochloric solution so to calculate ph we know that ph is equal to negative log and then concentration of the hydronium ions now we know that the concentration of the hydrochloric acid will be equal to the concentration of the hydronium ions it produces why because hydrochloric acid is what we know as a monoprotic acid right so if it's a monoprotic acid that means it will only produce 
one uh, or it will only donate one proton so only one hydronium ion is produced there so that means the concentration that we were given of that uh, hydrochloric uh, hydrochloric acid solution will be the same concentration of the hydronium ions that it produces so we're just simply going to say log and then here we substitute the concentration as 0 0.15 now when we punch that into our calculator we have 0 0.82 so remember there is no si unit for ph so you just simply leave it like that the remarks formula substitution and the correct answer so no si unit remember now they say a solution is made by dissolving na2co3 solid in water is the solution of uh, the sodium carbonate acidic or basic now we know that this is a base so obviously according to arrhenius when we react a base in water then it must produce what hydroxide ions and if hydroxide ions are produced that means the solution will be basic it will be alkaline right so 7.3.1 we were just supposed to say basic right then 7.3.2 says now write down a balanced chemical equation that explains the answer to question 7.3.1 right so why we are saying it's basic so basically we're going to have na 2 co3 reacting with water and then now the reaction that comes about uh, with this one is that it will produce h2co3 and then plus the sodium hydroxide right now the production of the sodium hydroxide there should be able to tell us that this here is basic right but then also if we can consider that sodium here is known as a spectator ion right so a spectator ion is simply an ion that is present in both uh, the reaction so from the beginning of the reaction to the uh, final reaction that it is present but then it simply does not take part in the chemical reaction so we call it a spectator ion now according to a uh, according to what we've been told from grade 10 and 11 we know that spectator ions can simply just be removed from a chemical equation so if we remove here note that we have two ions of the sodium so if we remove it from here then we are supposed to be left with co3 and then two minus to indicate that we just removed two ions and then plus h2o and then this here we're still going to have the h2 co3 but then note again the sodium becomes a spectator ion here so we're just going to remove it from that uh, equation that so we are left with oh minus now the fact that we have hydroxide ions here now proves that the solution is basic right so at the end of the day this is what you are supposed to have right for that three marks so how I remove the Na here, it's because Na is the spectator ion. Sodium ion is a spectator ion. So it can simply be removed uh, from the equation on the reactant side and also on the product side. Right. So at the end of the day, that's what you have. So we have came to the end of the lesson. All that was for 19 marks. So you know what to do. Press the thumbs up button if you have enjoyed the lesson and then you found it helpful. And if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. But most importantly, please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team.